Welcome back guys. Time for another fictionalhead.com quick tutorial. Uh, today's a little more technical than usual because we're going to be covering um, how to do gradients with Pantone colors because for anyone who's ever actually tried to do this um, you'll see at the top here the spot colors which are the Pantones. When you blend between them it becomes gray in the middle uh, and this is even more apparent when you do it uh, when you see the printed piece versus when the colors are spot um, up here when they're processed they blend just fine so if you look here and I really hope that this comes through on compression um, with YouTube and everything but the gradients really muddy and gray in the middle but then a process blend looks just fine um, and I won't go into great detail with what the difference is between spot and process but f suffice to say process colors are CMYK breakdowns where every color is made with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black and spot colors are just that color. They're straight out of the ink is just that color and that color alone. Um, they're generally used for if you have a picky client who has a very specific Pantone color for their um, logo like the Kellogg's red would always be the same they wouldn't leave that up to chance with CMYK because once you print it uh, if the the mixing of the ink is a little bit off it could produce a different shade of red every time now the reason this is happening is because with a process blend between two colors um, Illustrator is actually just interpreting the CMYK values and producing a whole host of other colors between your light and your dark um, and you can't use the eyedropper really um, in Illustrator to prove that unless I take a screenshot of it here but I'll take a screenshot of it <coughs> and paste it and you can see that when we use the eyedropper on it um, you probably the video might be too small but if you look at the CMYK values in the corner as I drag over this it's producing all these different um, breakdowns of CMYK to give me that gradient However, in a spot-to-spot -spot blend, the ink color is the ink color. There's no interpretation um, of it. So what happens is you get either the light blue or the dark blue, and in the middle here, it's either not printing enough ink of the light or dark, and the paper's coming through, um, which produces the white kind of foggy look. Um, it'd be way more pronounced if it was uh, a different blend or even on like a... A shinier stock or something. Um, I remember we had a client once whose logo had to do this and it was kind of where this whole process came to the forefront of my mind because we initially printed it and it produced this and it was just hideous to look at. So um, that said, this is how you go about fixing it. Let's say that our fictitious client has a logo that wants to blend between Pantone um, cyan, or it could be any Pantone really, and Pantone 2765. Um, if I were to actually just create the object and do a gradient like I normally would here, I'm going to end up with that gray. So the way around that is to use overprinting and opacity masks. Now that may sound a little confusing, but we'll just start from scratch. So say that this is the final logo, and actually we'll drag the text over here so you can get an idea. All right, our company is named Process. Say that this is their logo. Um, what you would do is you lay down the brightest color first. So I'm gonna lay down the bright blue, and then I'm gonna hit Control C and Control F, which will place another version of this object right over top of itself. Um, and the reason I do that is so that you don't have to fuss around with the align tool to get it back over top of itself. Um, and then just hold down shift and use your arrow keys to move it around so that you know it's still directly in line with the previous version. And then once you have a direct copy, lay down the dark color. So now I've got the light and the dark. And then do control C, control F to paste in front and get another copy and this is where we're actually going to make our gradient. So instead of making it with our two colors, we're going to make it with white and black. Um, and that's pure uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, white and 0, 0, 0, 100, um, 
100% K black. Um, in this version, anywhere that you want the dark color, you want white, and anywhere that you don't want the dark color, you want black. This works just like a layer mask in Photoshop, um, where black is no and white is yes. So I'm going to make this my opacity mask. And then once I have that filled out, I just use shift and tap it and move it right back over top of the dark color. And then select both of them, grab them both. And on your transparency tab, hit the little arrow in the corner and hit make opacity mask. Now we can see that it kept the dark at the top. Actually, this is opposite of what I was doing down there, so I'll reverse it real quick. Um, I had it that way with the dark at the bottom. So if you make your opacity mask, now we've got this shape where the dark slowly creeps in at the bottom. And then if I nudge that back down with um, shift and the arrow keys, it's back over top of the, the blue. But we can see that that nasty gray has shown again. So what you do for the final step is you pull open attributes, select this dark shape, and select overprint. What that does is, um, in a normal printing process, there's some trapping involved where the printer, like say it has this shape and this shape to deal with, um, and it overprint still turned on, so that's eliminating it there. If I were to print this on a piece of paper, um, the printer isn't going to print the dark blue where these overlap because that would be a waste of ink, and that's called trapping. It looks to see uh, where the, the difference is. So without overprint, it's just going to print the dark and then kind of clip around it and then print the light right over top of it. What overprint does is it tells it to kind of ignore trapping and print the dark color everywhere and then print the lighter color here right on top of that ink. Um, this is used generally for kind of overlay effects like this. Um, it works better when the light color is the one that's getting overprinted on if you ask me. But um, <clears throat> by utilizing overprint, what we're doing is we're printing solid blue everywhere that we want it and then overprinting the dark blue on top of the light blue to utilize the gradient. And what that does is it produces an effect very similar, if not, it tends to be a tiny bit darker because of the, the extra ink, but to a process blend. Whereas if we were to do that straight with the gradient tool like I showed earlier, you're going to get that nasty gray in the middle. And it's really nasty when you see it printed. It looks almost like a printing error. I mean it is a printing error, but it, it's not good. So there you go. If you need to do a, bl a gradient blend uh, with two colors, spot colors, that's how you do it to avoid the nasty gray gradient in the middle. Um, the way to check to see that all this is working correctly is under View, where you select Overprint Preview to check. Um, It'll, get, it'll try to give you an accurate representation of what it would look like once this process is completed off the press. Um, with overprint preview off, it's showing it looking almost verbatim like the process breakdown, but then when we show overprint preview, it darkens up slightly. Um, An overprint preview also shows, will show you this nasty gray effect if you, um, if you don't have it. Uh, set to overprint. So like if this isn't our, um, if our dark shape with the opacity mask isn't set to overprint fill in the attributes, um, when overprint preview is turned on, like right now it's off and it looks like we did it correctly, but if you do overprint preview, it actually shows that if we were to send this through the press, it would look like crap when it came out the other end because this is not set to overprint. So make sure that that is checked um, and always make sure that you have overprint preview checked um, for objects that need to print overprint. Um, and one other thing is that if you have something that's white set to overprint, nothing's going to happen because white, white ink doesn't exist. Well, there's fancy white ink now as of, as of like 2012. but. On generally every press, white ink doesn't exist. So like if you had this text like that, 
and then you set it to overprint, it's just going to disappear because it can't overprint white over top of a color. Um, and one other thing for your clients, if you just give me a second here, in Acrobat, if you were to make a PDF and send it to someone, like I'll just turn this into a PDF actually. If you were to make a PDF and send it to a client and it has an overprint in it, um, and they're not the most computer savvy person and they open it up and it looks like the gray and they get all offended because their uh, logo colors aren't accurately represented in the file. I think I already have it turned on, but under preferences for Illustrator, um, under page display, it looks like they've moved it. Oh no, it's right here. Under page display, use overprint preview. I have mine set to always because um, I use it for things, but generally it's set to never or um, automatic. And if that's the case, it's going to start changing the look of some of these things. So if you send your PDF to a client and they wig out, just say go to edit preferences page display and turn overprint on to always so that they can see it. Um, it's kind of a hassle, but now you know where it is if that ever comes up. Um, yeah, okay, I think that is it. And now if you have any questions, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter, you know what to do. I uh, hope it was helpful.